listening to Tiger Cats at the half. Well, the Canadian Football Hall of Fame game is playing exactly like we want it to be. Just a thriller so far through 30 minutes of football. Your home time. Hamilton Tiger Cats leading the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, leader of the West, 22-16. This is Tiger Cats at the half, presented by my insurance broker, Bubba O'Neill, along with Andy Fantuz. And Andy, let's be honest here, football is a 60-minute game, but it's hard not to be giddy about the first 30. <laughs> we're, just, we're watching an incredible game right now. This is this is just back and forth. Both teams are, are playing well. I mean, we have almost 500 yards of offense. You add in that 120-something yard return on the extra point and and almost another kick return we're seeing a lot of electric plays tonight and it, it's just been a treat to watch we you gotta love you gotta love where Hamilton's at right now though you really do yeah. because they they've been taking some punches and they keep responding they came out they came out firing got 10 points early and and they and they keep responding to the bombers both both teams only one punt each in the first half only one sack allowed each, zero turnovers, both teams. Only one penalty total between the teams. Like, we're watching some high, high quality football. I mean, I guess if you like, if you like offense, especially. <laughs> well, I mean, and you're right about that because we can't sit here and say, well, Winnipeg's not playing at their regular standard. They're playing at a real high level, but it seems like the Tiger Cats, offensively and defensively, keep having answers. And when they seem to build the confidence off one play, offensive or defensively, they keep building. Yeah, they do. And, and it seems like the Tiger Cats have, have sort of methodically worked their way down the field for the most part. Bombers are more so taking advantage of some big plays and, and broke either broken coverage or some double moves. Uh, Which we the, knew they could do. We knew they could do that, yeah. We knew they were going to go for those corner routes. They've already hit three or four. They hit a couple stutter goes, uh, a few seams slash posts in the middle. Um, but the, the, you got to like what you're seeing out of the, the Ticat defense because we talked about they got to stop the run. They can't allow Winnipeg to dictate the flow of the game, the tempo, and the physicality of the game, and that's what they're doing. They, Run and Peg only has 19 rush yards in that first half. Now they got to find a way to, you know, cover up some of these receivers downfield. But uh, I, I, th this approach to me is. is is better than, than playing a soft coverage and just allowing Winnipeg to, to run the ball and control the line of scrimmage. So I really like what what you're seeing um, from the from the you know the uh, the front seven of the Tie Cats and I, Jameer Thurman had a great chance for an interception that really could have uh, changed the momentum and Winnipeg ended up scoring a few plays later. But I, I, what you're seeing out of the Hamilton offense, and Taylor Powell specifically, has been impressive. It seems to be carried over from the Ottawa game. Yep. He's been scrambling around, moving, finding receivers downfield. Uh, the, the, the players, when they get the ball in their hand, that you can see their, their will and desire to get those extra yards, to fight for the first downs or, or just for the yak. And it, it's really... Uh, it, 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 it's just been a really exciting game. I mean, I'm just lucky to be here. Well, I'll tell you the one thing that, and we've been badgering this team, and it's been your car star keys to victory for numerous weeks, start fast. And I was able to get down, I normally stay up here on the fourth floor for, you know, to you know take down notes, and I made a little trip down to the field, and I saw a big play happen in the first quarter in which... We haven't seen, we're not, we are not used to the Tiger Cats have started slow in the first quarter. And I think they've gotten the crowd into this now. They have, exactly. They, well, they started with that nice long drive, which unfortunately ended in a field goal. But then they forced Winnipeg to punt the ball. It was their only punt to the half. But they, and then they immediately went down and scored a touchdown. So you're thinking, this is, this is, this is great right now. And, um, and right after that, it was that missed uh, interception opportunity, and which, which really could have put a, put a nail on that first quarter scoring. But regardless, you know, Winnipeg's not going to go down easy. They're, they're a strong team, a resilient team. And this has just been a great ball game. It's tight right now. It's anybody's game. But we're looking at 1,000 yards of offense if we keep this pace up, uh, which is pretty exciting. Well, Tiger Cats at the half, presented by my insurance broker, as we do on each home game. Always proud to bring in the alumnus of distinction, the Tiger Cats alumnus of distinction. His name is C.J. Gable, and he is with us here at the broadcast booth. And I'll tell you, C.J., it is great to see you. 
I, it's interesting. We keep saying this about a number of the guys that come in here. Are you game ready? Like, are you, like I'm telling you. I don't know. Maybe I mean, on the second down and short, maybe a little quick pitch. Like, nah, you look go, ready. I can, I can go the whole game. I think I can go still, man. <laughs> I, got, I think I got two more years left with me. <laughs> Honestly, I was sitting with CJ and his family, and then all of a sudden I, I look around and CJ's gone. He went over to the sideline. I think he was trying to get a, put his helmet on and get out there. I'm trying to see if anybody left some pads over there to sneak on real quick. <laughs> and I, and I, I'm sure for you what that feeling that you're feeling like, and I'm sure it's great for you to come home. And I mean, this is your home, whether you like it or not. But for you, it's got to be great to see a, a game like this with this kind of atmosphere. Oh, yeah, man. You know, Hamilton always bring the noise every time we played out here. It was always packed. It was always loud, you know. And the thing is, when we was here, that we never don't lose at home. That's the one thing. We can't lose at home. So we always bring the best out of us, you know, to show the crowd love all the time. Well, we need to remind the team of that this year, but uh, it's looking good so far. Um, so to, what, what's it like being back in Hamilton, brother? Man, you know, it's, it's home, man. Uh, you guys always show me love out here, you know. I was all, when I came, first came out here, I was nervous because I was away from my family. But, you know, when I got here, you know, when I started playing, everybody showed me love. And, you know, and it just felt like home. So I, when I got here, it was just the same, you know. I didn't miss a beat. The players, the, the guys, they were the coaches, everything was just gelling together, man. I just missed all of that. Yeah, that's great. You, you know, you were always one of the, the most reliable players I ever played with. You, you know, you talk about putting money in the trust jar. Well, we knew C.J. Gable was going to make the block, was going to run the right pattern, was going to go go hard. He, he, like, you you could just do it all, man. And, and, and uh, you know, I, I guess I'm just pumping your tires here. But um, <laughs> Well, you know, the tires could have been pumped even further. I mean, let's be honest here. You ran at a time, it was a tie cat when it was a passing offense. Yeah. Your numbers could have been even better had it been a different type of offense, but they always say, the number 32, that when it came down to block, you could get the job done. Yeah, I mean, I had to, you know, it was a, it's a team thing, you know. I knew, I knew, dang, I, I'm about to run it back. You know you want the ball all the time. Like, dang, I want to run it, I want to run it, but who was winning? So, me, for I, I, I shouldn't be like that, you know what I'm saying? It's, I'm a team player, so when it came to that, you know, I just love the blocking too as well, and we was winning as well, so I'm like, okay, whenever they get that chance, whenever I get that rock, I'm the best of leave, I'm going to try to score because I don't know the next time I'm going to get it. So I got to make sure I make the best of it. But, you know, it was it's all good. It's all love, man. So you went, uh, you went out to Edmonton for a couple of years after after finishing here, and uh, and what are you doing with yourself now? Uh, now, man, I'm just coaching high school football, you know, back in um, – Back in uh, California, you know, um, coaching running backs out there, getting the young kids right to get them ready high for school. Uh, yeah, high school, get them ready for college, you know. So uh, I make sure all my backs are always going to be college ready, best believe. And I don't take it easy on them either. I got high expectations when I coach my running backs. And you got your family here with you today? Who's with you? Yeah, I got my wife, and I got my wife, Becca, and um, my little one, Jordan, she's four, and my son, Christian, he's 17. You know, they all up here. Them two, my uh, kids, they never been up here, so they don't know how how I'm a big deal. They, I would, <laughs> they, they think like they hear about it. They be looking at me like, especially my son looking at me like, what? Like, no, you're not. And then you know, since you got up here, you seen everything, so they know now. All but, right, coach, what do uh, what's the halftime uh, talk in the locker room? Man, I, for the backs, you know, I just tell them, hey, keep running hard, keep moving your feet on contact. You know, pass blocking, make sure we stay inside out. Hit on the rise and everything else. Just make plays when we get the ball. So uh, that's great advice. <laughs> but, so you're you're back in Hamilton, and uh, I know uh, I know Becca was out here um, quite a bit when you were playing. Is there any spots that you frequent that uh, you've been to that you were like, oh, I miss going to there, right? whether it be a restaurant or somewhere, a park or something? Man, it was this, it's this place. I keep forgetting the name of it though. It's like right up the street. But I forgot the name, but it's so good. Like, this is a breakfast spot. And we talked about it last time on your show. I can't remember the name, though, for some reason. The, but it's, like, right up the street up on here. Probably that touchdown, the Barton Street touchdown place. Probably a lot of people <laughs> used to freak and freak with that. That's for sure. I mean, hey, you know, this is interesting for me as a broadcaster. Um, you know, and I was able to be around and in the locker room for your entire career. 
And it's amazing to me, you're, I know I see, uh, I guess it went on Friday, you're at my TV station, Tim did a little in the morning show, they did an yeah. interview with you and you were great, and you're sitting down with me and Andy here and you're great and talking about the old days. But I remember a different C.J. Gable. <laughs> I remember a C.J. Gable that I think, I'm going to say, you might have ran for like 143 or 145. You had a great game, a couple of touchdowns. And I walked up to you, C.J., and I said to you, uh, hey, hey, C.J., can I get a couple words with you? And you said to me, what do you want, why would you want to talk to me? <laughs> you were always very quiet with the media. I, I, what, what, was, what was that all about there? I just, I just didn't, I don't, I don't know. My, I didn't like my play to talk, you know. I didn't really want, I let, I'll let everybody else talk or whatever. I just want to play and then leave like that's it like talking it wasn't my thing like, I just I never used to do this I don't know because it's just never my thing to do so I always want everybody else to just not do to it embarrass for you but that was, <laughs> I found it really interesting nah. you're great you're great on that set right yeah now. I just never never wanted to do it I just always want everybody else to do it and I just be like for what like why you want to talk to me I, I think I had an all right game like <laughs> let, let everybody else talk man I didn't want to do none of that you're there for business business yeah, that's trip, it. But <laughs> that's it. I, you might not have been a talker but you're always a good listener and uh, and which is a great characteristic so listening to people looking them in the eye and then, yeah. and then responding to what they're saying and not just thinking about what you know what's happening next uh, was something I always remember uh, specifically from you so great characteristic for all all the young athletes out there. Yeah, thank you, man. I, you know, I try. I learned. I learned from in college. Had some mistakes in college, <laughs> and so I learned from that. Real, <laughs> real short on time here. I just got to throw you one quick one here. At the end of your career with the Edmonton Eskimos, you came back here and signed a one-day contract. Why was that important to you? Because they showed me love, man. They, they was this only team that gave me a try. You know, I tried out for Calgary, uh, Toronto. You know, and uh, some other. I forgot another team. And nobody say they said no, but Hamilton, they when I tried out, they gave me a shot, you know, and then they kept me for six years, you know, and they embraced me. And I told them, I told myself like, man, I'm never gonna. This place is home, you know. Love hey, it. I, I, I had to show respect. Well, enjoy your trip back home, and I, I mean, back home, obviously in your in your physical home in California. But while you're here, enjoy home because it is home, and you can come back anytime that you. Uh, you Anytime you want, you can come back and join Andy and I. Thank you. I really cup. appreciate that. Thank you. Tiger Cats at the half coming to a conclusion, uh, courtesy of my insurance broker. Hamilton Tiger Cats leading 22-16 to 16 over the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. RJ and Luke are ready for the final 30 minutes of this football game. We will be back at the conclusion of, all, of it all. We'll talk some victory. That's coming up next on the Tiger Cats Audio Network. Are you thinking of taking the dog for a walk? Feeling like you should head to the gym? Maybe you need to restock the fridge and don't want to miss a single snap of Tiger Cats football. We've got you covered. Catch it all live on TieCats.ca or on the TieCats All Access app.